Ashley, how are you going, mate? Yeah, no worries. We're about uh, half a minute out, eh? Ashley Dixon is heading for a remote farm station 200 miles south of Darwin in the wilds of Australia's Northern Territory. He's been hired with his partner to round up cattle and few men do it better up here. This is their story. In the hands of a of a novice operator, yeah, they can be hard on the cattle. Um, that's a lot of the reason we've got these guys doing this work, because they know when to push and when to back off. Before we come along, I think the only way they used to muster was with the traditional horse and men. I grew up in a stock camp before, and um, there used to be something like 14, 15 blokes on horses. Used to ride out, and like we'd be gone for months. If you've got a good partner, it certainly helps helps the day through. But the relationship builds, I think, from a couple of bottles of rum, I think, when we first started. I don't drink beer, but I drink rum. Rum and coke, my drink. <laughs> we might have several. <laughs> the bore that we're running them into, there's a couple of little watering paddocks here, and the bore is there. That gate will be open there. Creek runs down along that fence. We carry water, we carry survival kit for rations and probably the thing that makes me feel most comfortable is um, a sidearm because you don't know where you land, I wouldn't go away without it. My old man would never let me go away and learn to fly until I'd done five or six years and become a head stockman. He reckons that you had to have a good knowledge of the bush and, and um, the cattle and everything before you got up in the air. Uh, I think there's about 1,500 in the paddock. We should get down the end of, by the end of the day. I'll just go back up and have a look along that 70 mile dam paddock and make sure nothing's gone back in there. In my younger days, it it was very hairy, yeah, very frightening. Yeah, I, I never used to go very close to the trees. I used to stick about 500 feet. I used to leave a lot of cattle behind. I remember when I first started, I used to look at logs and anthills and rocks and just things in the shade, you know, I thought it was cattle. And I used to look under every bush, every tree, because I thought there was cattle. But once you got your eye in, you know what you're looking for. And it doesn't take long. Now the time it takes you to do the job is where the stockmanship comes into it because some days are 10 or 15 kilometre walks. Cattle are tend to want to run away and stuff. You have to control them and put them in line, you know, and sometimes you'll give them a hard time, push them a bit. Mainly the noise they um, react to. Uh, the helicopter does come down into vision if you are trying to really put some pressure on them. When we first started it was difficult because we both didn't know how we worked. You know, I didn't know whether he was flying behind my back or I was flying behind his. But after a few runs you sort of get to know each other and um, you know how each other work. I know where he is and he knows where I am. And uh, you just got a good relationship. Just talking to the older people that swore black and blue they'd never ever fly a little machine like this but um, once they brought it out here and started mustering with it, they sure tested it out. I think it even shot Frank Robinson. <laughs> it can be difficult, exhausting, depending on the cattle, you know. Now and then you get the old niggly old cow that doesn't want to do what she wants to do. But um, getting around in amongst trees and stuff, that's, that's serious business and you don't, you don't hoon around. That's fair to come here, yeah, isn't it? The biggest thing you've got to get used to is operating low level um, with obstacles. Um, and always the most, the, the most important thing for a helicopter pilot to remember is where the wind's coming from. 
I mean, to do the job, sometimes we go right on top of the trees or we'll put the skids in the top of the bushes or whatever. The tail rotor on the back is very important. You've got to make sure that doesn't go into a bush or something or it's all over. The road here anyway. You're way out of the envelope <laughs> most of the time. Dead man's curve is when you put yourself in a position where it's <clears throat> probably life-threatening to you and putting your machine in danger. Sort of anywhere below 300 really um, is a danger zone with um, less than probably 10 to 15 knots. It's even worse when you tail into wind and you're trying to look at your stock. That's dead man's curve. It is skillful in what we do. Generally, mustering is it's as hazardous as what you want to make it. <laughs> I'm not comfortable at all. No way. It's, you've got to do the work. If you want them cattle out of them trees and that, you've got to get yourself in that danger level. Yeah, very dangerous. The majority of accidents, well, they vary. You know, a lot of people blame pilots and stuff, and you do have a a flutter in your motor and think nothing of it, it might have been oh, a wind in the wrong direction or something. I had once last year. In my mind I felt there was something wrong with the machine, like it happened in a split second, I was only a treetop and I, was, I banked around, downwind, and it, and it sort of drove me into the ground, I sort of had no control and before I knew it was, I was standing out alongside the machine and um, completely ripped the machine off, but never got a scratch on me. had a um, tail rotor failure and um, spun onto the ground. I was lucky to be low enough. No, no, no problem there. A couple of years after that, had an engine failure and landed right way up in a gorge. Uh, we'd done a little bit of damage, but wasn't no injury or anything. But we work daylight till dark. We'd, whatever the job takes. You get out of the machine at the end of the day and walk home and have a good night's sleep, wake up, all you want to do is get back and go flying again. <laughs> so we've taken you right around the world. Until we're airborne again, keep your seatbelts fastened from your flight crew. Bye-bye.